the 15 words that you must know. If you know these 15 words, you can speak fluent English. And once you know them, you are able to speak them. Your English is amazing. So practice all these 15 words with me. Hi everyone, my name is Shalim and welcome back to my another session of learning English and improving your English speaking skills with me. So well, today's lesson is going to be another awesome lesson because today I am going to tell you about, you know, these 15 words that you must know to speak fluent English. So if you know these words, if you know them, your English will become amazing and you will be able to speak fluent English. Why? Because we need words to speak in English. So now today I have included such words which are used in lots of spoken English. These words are not such words where you are just learning them and they are used only in written English. Okay, so it's highly formal English. No, these words are something that is a part of your advanced English yet. They are used in everyday conversations and you are used a lot in day-to-day -day life so these words will make you speak english so fluent okay so are you guys ready for this if you are ready please let me know in the comment section that you are ready to learn all these 15 words with me till the very end of this video all right so before beginning Please subscribe to the channel so that you can get all the lessons that I post for you on this channel. And please like the video and share it with your friends too. Okay, so coming back to today's lesson, let's get started with these awesome 15 words, 15 essential words that you must know. And if you know them, your English will become amazing and you will speak fluent English. So let's begin with all these 15 words. Let's get started. The word number one is rosy. Rosy. Now you must think rosy is a very easy word that's kind of a shade of a color or the pinkish shade, right? Well, that's true. That is true. But do you know rosy has another meaning? Let me tell you guys the sentence because we are going to learn everything with context. The purpose of today's lesson is to learn this vocabulary with context because only then you will be able to speak it right so the sentence is the prospect to sign this deal seems rosy that means if a situation is rosy if something is rosy that means you know it's indicating success or happiness something right that is going to be hopeful in a positive way so a rosy situation means a successful situation a situation that will bring success happiness full of promises a promising situation all right rosy is a very positive word and it is used to describe a situation all right guys a positive situation so if you are in a situation you know you know in a positive situation you say that rosy situation or you can you can also say that you felt rosy right you can also describe it as a you know feeling but most of the time this is described as a situation for example guys Another example I'm giving you, the financial condition of the company, it's rosy. We got a rosy opportunity to go and watch the match. Our day was rosy as, a, as we went out for a movie. So rosy, right? So, okay, now it's your turn. You have to make sentence on your own. Till then, let's move on to the next word. All right. So the word number two is contemplate. Okay. Let's look at the sentence first. Contemplated the situation before giving any answer. So contemplate is basically to think about something. All right. Something, think deeply about something, right? So thinking for a very long time. All right. Thinking too deeply about something is contemplate. So contemplate often people contemplate before taking a decision and people contemplate when they are analyzing you know a situation that means they are thinking too deeply about a situation for example guys uh, let me give you one example also over here the example sentence can be uh, she contemplates her future too right often that she constantly thinks too deeply about her future 
all the time i think that happens with all the teenagers and everyone who's growing up i think normally that happen with people right so a world with context to contemplate a situation that is to think too deeply okay about a situation or something think too deeply uh, for a very long time so being very thoughtful in your decisions or something contemplate all right so now let's move on to the uh, word number 3 all right so you have to listen this word very very uh, you know carefully the word number 3 is delusion delusion so guys you can repeat also with me for the pronunciation delusion once again delusion right that's absolutely amazing now delusion i think that is something you are familiar with and uh, we hear it a lot you need to come out of your delusion and accept the reality so delusion is basically the situation that we have created in our mind which is not real it's fake all right so delusion can be anything when you know about the facts especially when you know about the facts you have an idea that this could be false still you are believing those false things right so that's called delusion the people that are you know uh, living in a delusion so that is like if a person knows that that person is getting you know promoted is kind of non existent like they are not much because they are you know um, other contenders okay who might have profound better now still this person is thinking that no i will get promoted even after knowing that the other person or the other person contenders performed better and they are not you know accepting the reality and they are just living in the delusion that i am going to get promoted right so that is the kind of delusion that you know it about the fact right still you want to live in that fantasy or the fake world that you have created that is the delusion so you can use this word correctly that is delusion All right let's come on to the word number 4 the word number 4 is blemish repeat after me guys blemish yes once again blemish excellent now blemish for that you need to hear the sentence there was no blemish on her beautiful white dress now blemish on a white dress that means a mark or a spot so blemish is basically to spoil an appearance by a spot or a mark right that kind you know appearance of something so a blemish can be the spot of a ink on that white dress it can be the spot of something that you said that you eat it might have fallen down so there was no blemish on her beautiful white dress so it was not spoiled without any mark without any spot so blemish is like a spot in the appearance all right blemish is also used for situations for example a particular situation is spoiled by a particular action right you can say it blemish means everything was good everything was going well then something happened and that was a blemish in the whole event or the whole situation for example everything is going good you might be taking a decision for a project and suddenly one of the team member who is performing really well and giving idea is changed and replaced by somebody else so you will still have you know the project everything is do well and because that one person was replaced you were not able to meet the deadlines because that person took a little bit time to get adjusted to this particular project that means the changing of that team member was a blemish as a team missed the due date for the project right so that this that is how you are forming the sentences okay so the word blemish so it's a word that you can use any th- any time you you want to refer to a situation or yeah if you want to talk about the appearance the clothes yes you can use the word blemish now let's move on to the word number 5 the word number 5 is fiasco fiasco okay it's a kind of you know popular these days which you can speak english you will hear it in lots of spoken english so the fiasco is basically a kind of disaster 
not a natural disaster obviously a disaster you mean kind of a very bad situation something that is ending up in a bad situation or not an accepted you can say kind of a mess you know when you want to say that this situation is a such a mess we not able to we are not able to understand what is happening what happened and a complete failure as you can see so the whole meeting end, ended up in fiasco maybe because people were not able to take a decision there were so many conflicting ideas that the meeting ended up in an argument and yeah no result that means it's fiasco right let's take another example could be the party turned into a fiasco because two people started arguing now let's move on to the next world the number 6 world right so six number world is you have to listen it very carefully this is root root is very easy and it's simple root is basically the base of any plant right the long roots that go inside the land the soil that helps a plant grow so that's the meaning of root but root has another meaning in conversational english root also means the cause of something especially the cause of any problematic situation the cause of any problem why something is happening and there is also a particular phrase which is known as root cause so root is basically when you want to find out what has actually led to a particular situation the beginning of something where everything you know begin from what was the cause the reason that is root right for example we need to find the root cause of the delay immediately right let's organize a meeting to discuss the root of this particular issue so root of the issue that means the cause of the issue right so what is basically causing this particular issue so root cause is a phrase and that's we use a lot in our conversational english now let's come on to the num uh, word number 7 the word number 7 is exaggerate now what is exaggerate do not exaggerate the situation by adding unnecessary details so exaggerate is basically to make it seem larger than reality kind of you know magnifying the thing uh, for example you bought something and you are going to exaggerate the price of that particular thing that i brought it i'll give you a very basic example could be that stayed in a their three star hotel on your vacation and you made it sound like a five star hotel and you are telling everybody that you stayed in a five star hotel is like exaggerating the things kind of exaggerating the thing so basic example could be that exaggerate is to just add on details and make things so magnificent in reality and they are not that magnificent or you can you make them larger larger than reality guys let's move on to the world number 8 and the world number 8 is euphoria euphoria okay now euphoria the team felt a sense of euphoric after winning the match i is euphoria is basically to feel extremely happy about something or when you are extremely happy it sense of happiness a sense of achievement excitement for something a particular situation for example guys the students were euphoric to know their results my friend was caught up in euphoria after getting admission into her dream college so euphoria is you know basically the sense of extreme happiness you are experience because you have achieved something great so it's you know produce from a moment of greatness right for example winning a match is basically a big deal right getting admission into your dream college it's a big deal getting a great result after the exam is a big deal so all these situation can be described as euphoric situation right now let's move on to the world number 9 futile futile let's take an example all her efforts to make the project were futile as it rained heavily the next day so all her efforts to make a great science project were futile because it rained heavily futile means useless futile means whatever you have done it useless you do not submit the assignment on the deadline your assignment will become futile so assignment is going to be futile because the teacher might not accept the assignment after the due date after the end date 
and hence the assignment is futile so futile means useless okay now let's move on to the word number 10 the word number 10 is inevitable means something that you cannot avoid at any cost that is bound to happen something in life are inevitable for example they are inevitable so in inevitable is something that you cannot stop from happening it's a bound to happen and sometimes you use it for the situation all right where you know that this is going to happen for example the appointment of new ceo was an inevitable decision because they might need a new ceo at that particular position right now let's move on to the word number 11 the word number 11 is charisma he has such a charismatic personality charisma or charismatic basically is the power to influence people to attract people in the positive way to influence them so the great leaders in the world they have charismatic personality that's why people are influenced that's why they are able to have that influence on that world for example people in power they have charismatic personality now the word number 12 the word number 12 is lured I, it's basically lured to attract somebody to do something by offering something to that person. It's like you are making somebody compelled to do something by offering them something in return, right? So guys, now let's talk about the word number 13. And the word number 13 is very, very. Guys, it's not very, it's very, very, W-A-R-Y, very okay you can see now what is the meaning let me give you an example sentence for you guys she was wary of traveling by a public transport at night very she was wary of traveling by a public transport at night so war to be wary is to be cautious uh, of something like to avoid something to be aware or to be cautious like you think about it before doing the particular thing and kind of uh, you are kind of protecting yourself from doing that particular thing or you are causing enough not to do it. That is being wary. So you think about a situation, you analyze whether it's right or not. Should you do or not? That is being wary of a situation. Now let's talk about the word number 14 and the word number 14 is vibrant. Vibrant vibrant the painting was full of vibrant colors so vibrant means bright kind of bright okay it's also a meaning of full excitement energy enthusiasm so when you feel enthusiasm after looking at a particular painting if you look up at painting which is full of brightness which is full of colors as you will feel a sense of positivity right from that particular painting you won't you look at the vibrant flowers spread over the garden so vibrant flowers kind of full of life beautiful color so guys now let's talk about the word number 15 enigmatic enigmatic means excellent now enigmatic listen to that sentence we participated in our treasure hunt which was an enigmatic experience for us okay he has an enigmatic personality so enigmatic is something that is mysterious you know something that has that aura of mystery of mystery to it that the person for example guys introverts who have great personalities are considered enigmatic or enigma because they keep to themselves yet they have great personality too right so guys these were all the 15 words that you must know if you know these 15 words you can speak fluent english and once you know them you are able to speak them your english is amazing so practice all these 15 words with me and now i have a homework for you all that you are supposed to create two of your own sentences make two sentences from each word and that we have discussed today in this video guys homework because in this manner everything that we have discussed today is learned today it's going to be more solidify in your mind and you are going to speak the words in a better way so create your own sentences and let me know in the comment section which word you like the most right 
and you can comment down your sec uh, your sentences also in the comment section right so that's it for today's video guys if you like the video please give thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe my channel thanks for watching bye bye take care